see. Yeah, I'm here. I'm working on a uh, audio issue, but I'm here. Audio issue. Audio Happens. issue. <clears throat> so everybody's whispering for some reason, you know. Uh, that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Did you get everybody up to max still whispery? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, like I haven't changed anything, so I don't know why it's all of a sudden like this. But yeah, hmm. that is uh, unusual. Actually, well, I just adjusted your volume, and it's not any different. So yeah, I don't know. Whatever, it's all good. It kind of sounds like you got a different mic on. Is it a new headset or something? No, no. But I sound different, yeah. Yeah, you you sound almost like. Uh... What's what's the word that I'm looking for here, friends? Because you all hear it too, I'm assuming. I have so many options, I don't feel like any of them are safe. <laughs> Underwater, maybe? Or inside of a jar? He sounds perfectly normal to me. Hmm. Uh, I mean, here. as far as Alex goes. Someday we'll start. Uh, we'll start out a session without technical difficulties from somebody. There will be a day, but that day will not be today. That reminds me of my uh, team on the uh, website I help moderate. We sometimes do uh, uh, stuff where it's like we will. Have you, have you guys ever seen like Mystery Science Theater Three Thousand? Um, no. Okay. Well, it's basically a bunch of things where we'll, like, take movies and we'll effectively make fun of them while we're watching them. <laughs> and the thing is, is that we'll have, like, a start time where it's like, okay, we'll start at, like, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We never start on time. We never start on time. <laughs> it's the nature of the beast. Getting yeah. everybody five, ten minutes flexibility is usually pretty... Mm -hmm. Pretty acceptable. I just find it funny, that's all. I mean, I'm not complaining or anything. I just find it humorous. Well, since Alex, can you hear us? Can you stand while you work on that? Can you stand me to ramble a little? Raise your hand if you can hear us. Blink twice hand. if you're under duress. And then let us know if you raised your hand. <laughs> By talking. Yeah. It looks like he's typing. He is. <clears throat> so that having been said, we are going to use a new program today. It is trial. It's actually specifically a free trial, which is the best kind of trial. Technically correct. <clears throat> but what it is going to be is it's going to be a synthesizer. So you'll notice when I use it, if it is... Let's see how to phrase this. At the end of the game, or sometime in the next day or so, whatever works for you, let me know if you like it, dislike it, find it distracting or helpful. And uh, it's not going to be used a lot, just once or twice here or there. Uh, I'm still learning the program. No problem. And that's all we're going to have for now. So with that aside, we are going to jump right into the actual campaign as everybody gets a couple things adjusted. The last game, you guys were traveling, and because of your, let's call it uh, side adventure slash vacation, in Anna Ray's garden, as well as, and I talked to someone, <clears throat> I think it was Ben, I was inquiring about how the drow were able to find you, or a general conversation of that nature. The gist of it was, you guys actually managed to lose them. Third day outside of uh, Velkenvale, 
But if you recall, on the Silken Paths, you actually passed by a drow caravan who was not looking for you, by the way. Um, and you guys managed to pass each other like ships in the night. You saw them, they saw you, but nobody attacked anybody. They looked like they were just carrying supplies on uh, sticky-footed lizards. And you're not inconspicuous. You know, the... Uh, Furbolg and the Asimir, the Kobold, the two Tabaxis, the Deep Gnome traveling with a Darrow traveling with a Kawatoa. There's you're definitely not inconspicuous. Because of that, it doesn't take long, especially a drow carrying supplies, to for your position to have been somewhat pinpointed. Couple that with the fact that you just stopped traveling for uh, two days at least. You rested once before going into the tomb, and then once when you got out. It makes it fairly easy for you to be tracked down. So at this point, they knew where you were, and you got they did actually caught up with you, <clears throat> and you managed to get away and i'm not gonna lie i i honestly expected at least one npc or player to die or be recaptured either from a sleep bolt i believe i don't remember who got hit with the sleep bolt but somebody that was did. Fergus. i expected someone to be taken out but unfortunately the uh fortunately for you you guys managed to avoid that so there's that at least and we quit the game after you guys managed to escape and ran to a point of near exhaustion i believe you picked up a level of exhaustion and after that you guys managed to get a long rest which i have not applied yet for everybody which i was waiting to till this game so that you could change your spells if you wanted to and the night you guys spent resting, you had a very disturbing nightmare of tentacles in the deep, as well as other things of that nature. That, coupled with your uh, long day, caused you to have to do some wisdom saving throws. You don't know what they were related to then, or particularly now, for that matter. But that is where we left the game off. With that, we are going to end or re restart the game here. And that is where we're going to be. So does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns, and or complaints? No. I'm good. Mal? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all good. Let's go. Alex? Oh, Alex is back. Nice. Yeah. You don't sound like you're in a jar anymore. Yeah. <sighs> Switch things up, so I'll get. The door is a jar. The Alex is a jar. Hmm. Hmm. Not the first time I've been called that. <laughs> Alrighty. So, you guys are, as far as I understand it, continuing to slew blue dop. And from there, intend to move via boat somewhere. You have uh, two primary options. We'll burn those bridges once you get a boat. We'll worry about when to go where. That'd be a conversation you guys can have at a later time. We'll burn those boats. We'll burn those boats. So, you guys rested about an hour from Slew Blue Dob, but you were about 20 minutes from the actual shore of the Dark Lake when you came into a cavern and climbed up on a ledge. So I just applied a long rest. That allows you guys to change your spells if you are a wizard or a druid. And let me know when you guys are ready, if you have any spells to change. I'm good. Good to go. I'm good. All right. Everybody is ready to roll. So yep. you guys travel. With the aid of Shushar, no uh, check necessary, no foraging as you will be arriving in Slew Blue Dop. And uh, Shushar tells you, uh, again, he warns you that you he is not going to be welcome 
in Slu Blue Dop, he probably won't be denied access because they trade openly with enemies. And so he wants you to, he's explained it before, but he wants to reiterate that there is no delineation as in the Kawatoan mind between enemy, ally, and trade partner. These things are constantly shifting. It is a power struggle. Someone who is viewed as an ally may lose his weapon and then become a slave, a potential slave enemy in a matter of minutes. If, if an ally can take your weapon away and, or render you no, no longer a threat to them, then you can and probably will be captured and enslaved. It's not, and he's traveled, especially with his him being who he is, he's traveled a lot more than many Kawatoans, so he can tell you that the permanence of the other races in terms of relations will not be found here. A Kawatoan that you've helped last month is a Kawatoan who probably won't remember the help you gave it yesterday. So, just Good something to, to bear in mind. Mm -hmm. His race is afflicted with a madness that he believes only he can cure. So you won't be denied entry. It's just whether the, the nature of your, your entry. So, Moving forward, if nobody has any, uh, are we keeping the same marching order, thirty feet ahead? Yeah, and then like um, as we get like closer to the the city itself, I'm gonna hold back and let everybody else go in first for first contact, and I'm gonna try and keep to the shadows and uh, bow in hand, ready in case shit hits the fan. I just keep a much tighter grip on my on my quarter staff. <laughs> okay. So that having been said, you guys march oh, forward. Fuck. What's that? I'm stealthy as fuck. <laughs> You're doing your best. Big You're ass guy stealthing right behind Agile Smoke. <laughs> Ooh, where'd you come from? All right, so moving forward, you guys reach the shore of the Dark Lake, and as it's been explained in the past, the Dark Lake is <clears throat> not a massive hunt, a miles across lake like you would expect on the surface. On, in the Underdark, this is a massive chamber that you've entered, but it's hundreds of feet. On the map you saw, it was miles, hundreds of miles of lake. And this is a massive chamber, and there are waterfalls coming out of various different levels. Across the lake, you can see at water level numerous small, large tunnels going off in various directions. They are all flooded. It is definitely a high level of water. And then you can see other tunnels in the rock going up into the ceiling as well as into the stone of the actual walls, both on the shore and across the way. Some of those tunnels going into the rock have water pouring out of them in the form of waterfalls. There is essentially a massive flooded series of catacomb-like tunnels and caverns that they have called the Dark Lake. I will... uh send you guys here a picture i don't want to i didn't intend to pull it up and upload it directly into uh fantasy grounds just for a little bit of saving of memory but i was i'm going to send it in discord and you mm. guys can just kind of get a general idea of what i mean okay. you can take a peek at your discretion interesting okay What's that below the surface? Or is that barrel? I think you should dive in and find out. It's Cthulhu. No. <laughs> so as obviously, if you were to get in a boat and sail through any of those openings, which you can see numerous, obviously, there would probably be numerous openings from there, numerous from there, numerous from there. So... It becomes evident to you simply standing on the shore of the Dark Lake 
what Shushar was explaining previously, that navigating the Dark Lake without a guide would be nearly impossible. Even if you are a ranger. Bah. There is a... The, the Dark Lake itself is something you would either need to know how to navigate, at least have some experience with. Now, as you march forward towards Slew Blue Dob, as you guys are moving deeper along the shoreline, I'm going to send you a map. I believe it should pop straight up as soon as I share it. I'm putting you guys on at the very bottom, and then I'm going to let you guys arrange yourselves as you will. Uh-oh. There's some fellas. And I put you at this point because this is the point where you begin seeing Kawatoans. Up ahead, you see three Kawatoans. They are standing out in the open, uh, blocking your passage, as it were, across the beach. Can they I see them? Are, everyone can see them. They're not making any okay. effort to hide. There is light in various forms and fashions around here, so you don't need... You, I don't know if you're using dark vision, but you see it in both forms. Dark vision and otherwise. Um, they have shields. From this distance, you can tell that their shields are covered in something slimy. Not sure exactly what that is all about. They have a spear in their hand, and they have a net hanging from what it is would be their belt. The picture there of Shushar, I'm going to... I'm sure you guys have seen this picture before, but I'm going to send you a different picture in Discord. You don't have to worry about it. It'll come through here in a minute. But it's uh, just a general idea of what you're looking at when you see the Kawatoa. And I'm going to try... My, my desire is to try to use sending pictures in Discord a little more frequently than sending you guys pictures in Fantasy Grounds because it just saves on memory for you and me as well. So there's a couple different images of Kawatoas. The uh, Kawatoas... Somebody's moving their stuff around. There's a couple different general pictures of Kawatoans. Here's uh, the one I'm wanting to share with you today as well, in addition to the ones you've seen in the past. So I'll just send this one over. And as far as you know, they, they either haven't seen you or they're not showing any evidence of having seen you. Um. If I can keep that same stealth roll, well, either way. Yes. Uh, smoke's going run up the side here. Stealthy, 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 stealthy to like there. Just waiting to see what happens when the group interacts. So I'm going to move you back no. to about right here. Oh, no. Oh, no. So your passive perception is, remind me. 16. Up here. 16. Yeah. So your passive perception is sufficient for you to spot a Kawatoan very clearly in active hiding right here. Okay. Okay. So then I will hold up then like here. Um, seems like he's noticed me or no? He has his net in his hand. Yeah. Uh, you broke up there. But yeah, it's very clear that he is hiding from whoever would be on the opposite side. There's there's definite effort. It's not very good effort, but it's effort. Does does it seem like he's uh, seen me or? It does not. Okay. So I'm going to um, be a hell of bow a in hand, bow in hand, ready to ready to shoot that guy if he makes a jump out at one of us. Okay. I guess the rest of us are just kind of walking down the beach cautiously. I'll let you guys yeah. handle all the tokens outside of combat, as is usual.
dun, really, dun, dun. And we're really nervous. Dun, dun, dun. Ophelia, are you going to yell out or what? <laughs> and obviously they see you, but they, but they continue to watch. They don't, uh, the creature doesn't jump out as far as Agile knows, but since you guys don't, uh, <clears throat> and I don't know if he's let you know by any means that I'm unaware of, but. No, no. No. Can I see him with my passive perception? Let's pull up your 15. passive perception. Yes, you can see him. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. You can see him and Agile can see him. That is it. All right, I just kind of let everybody in the group know that there's a guy hiding behind the pillar over there. Hey, there's a guy. Hey, there's a guy over there. <laughs> so... They continue to watch you guys moving up and moving on. Would we just we just probably keep on approaching until they stop us, right? That's the general idea. So they continue to. I'm just letting you guys handle your tokens. Um, there is music playing, so you can adjust them. Well, there will be shortly. You may need to adjust your. Coming in intermittent there. All right. So about that point, Shushar kind of hangs towards the back. But about this point, they yell out and watery voices calling for you to halt. I like how we have formation um, initially, initially. And now we're just like all over the fucking place. So, can I just yell out and say, hey, friends? You want to join the best friends club? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I kid, I kid. So, the first one actually just says halt. And right then, you notice a couple things happen all at once as they don't necessarily attack you, but the uh, creature behind the pillar, both of them, the one you saw and the one you didn't, uh -oh. move out as well as a number of Kawatoans that apparently had been uh, submerged come up on the beach and the Kawatoan leader which seemingly is this one calls out behind you and he says surfacers you are prisoners of Limigagoon <laughs> I love it that is so cool yeah, yeah that's awesome. drop your weapons and you will be shown mercy I just take a look over at Shushar and I just grip my quarterstaff even harder. Shushar turns to you and says, if you fight them, they'll fight back. If you overwhelm them, they will flee. If you surrender to them, they will enslave you. Say, I ain't going back into chains. Yeah, I don't yeah, really, I don't really want to be a slave. Yeah. I'm just going to yell out and say, no... Thank you. The, uh... Can we speak to your manager? <laughs> I'm gonna need to speak to your leader. They want my quarter staff. They can pry from my cold, dead paws. <laughs> well, there we go. I will roll... 
there. <laughs> I will roll all initiatives, and you can roll initiative. I think uh, everybody was said they were just going to have me roll. I believe yeah. was the overall yeah. decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me bump him down. Damn, crag cats always. Oh, all I got place. a real good roll. I got the same roll I always get. So, uh, the creatures attack. Uh, Agile, you can save that attack roll for your turn. Cool. But the creatures attack, and as they do, they all scream out something in watery, bubbly voices. And the word that echoes through your ears that seems to stick is Lemagagoon. Uh, Tony, the end of round is above some Kawatoans. Yeah, I gotta skip it down. I'm, I'm working my way down there. I gotta pop in a negative on him. Thank you, though. Sorry about that. Um, so, of course, Kostrikus just looks all around at all these Kawatoans. And, uh,. No surrender! As he throws <laughs> bolt wildly at the leader. And then immediately scampers into a safer position. <laughs> at least as far as he's concerned. As far, yeah. It's, it's probably it's, it's probably not safer. Shushar not uh, being s super happy about having to fight his own people when he was trying to get here to uh, protect them, or save them, as it were, is going to obviously act in the protection interest of his own people. And I'm guessing you are playing Jimjar today, just to verify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just making sure here. So Shushar runs forward with his bite attack and his spear. And it's the same type of roll. He stabs with his spear and completely misses. And you notice that the Kawatoans behind are making their way forward to a close off your retreat. Uh, clearly, they expect you to retreat. Now, <clears throat> one thing you notice when Shushar attacks... Um, Shushar missed his attack, and the Kalatoan blocked his attack with its shield. That glistening substance on his shield seems to hold Shushar's weapon. Ooh. And on uh, for Shushar, I skipped him a little soon, he has to do a strength saving throw to attempt to prevent his weapon from being stuck. And it is. He he manages to yank it back. But at that point, it, you can see that what that sticky sticky stuff is doing. Now that Kawatoan himself launches an attack with the same spear and it fails, so they're missing each other miserably as they would be expected. Uh, Jimmy here is going. He's going to uh, cast Blur on himself. Very fast. Uh, got himself targeted, right? Right, right, right? Yeah. Cool. So he's going to, yeah, cast Blur on himself. I cranked um, that music up for a second because I was having an issue. Okay. And he's going to charge this guy here. I discovered my issue with music. It's fixed. If you had to adjust your volume, sorry about that. Oh, good. Jim Jarrifo blurred, moving up into a defensive sort of position. That's his turn. All right. The Kalatoan right there throws his net at Shushar. Oh, no. Hits him. And Shushar is restrained. 
The Kawatoan, once he is netted, completely ignores Shushar and runs up with an insanity that you are surprised by. No qualms. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if he comes up, I'm going to go ahead and just move up to this area here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to smack him upside the Well, actually, since I should have advantage, I'm going to go ahead and try to smack him upside the head from behind. Good call. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go ahead and do martial arts. Oh, that should have been an advantage. Oh. That should have been an right. advantage. Let me roll right. that right. again. Go ahead and just roll. Mm -hmm. There you go. And kick him in the back of the head. <laughs> and why is this always not want to... There we go. Get them all. Mess them up. Um, do you know where that other paper went, babe? That was, that was right here. I don't. Uh, what's the twin cell? My mic's unmuted. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> it's the sound when I sit down. So I'll do twin spell. I gotta love the double and, uh, cast. <laughs> a quick correction while she casts her spell and gets that going. I did some research on a rule I applied for her last time, and probably due to sleep deprivation because I've used the ability before. Uh, twin spell does not require two spell slots. It requires one. Oh, very nice. Unreal. Even more broken. Huzzah. It, it simply splits the single spell. It doesn't double cast. Just maxing out that dice. Oh my god. Uh, hold on real quick. Hold on. Uh, one second, Ophelia. <laughs> do it, do Just it. keeps going. <laughs> you, you can keep rolling, but unfortunately, Twin Spell does not qualify for... I'm sorry, Magic Missile does not qualify for Twin Spell. Aww. Oh. 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 Ain't that a kick I will in the keep, dick? I will, I will keep your top three rolls, which are all max damage. But you get your flexible casting points back, and I will remove the damage from the second Kawatoan. I accept your terms. Your first three dice were max, so I'll keep that. 
uh, but it still costs you the spell slot. Um, yeah, twin spell is really confusing. It has to be. You can magic missile is just weird when it comes to it, but you can also move real close to them in the back if you want to see try a net on for size. Don't do it. Good choice, good choice. Or I guess right. Rumblefoot poisoned unconscious. Yeah, okay. let's go ahead and get his stuff back. And Fargus, as it were, is going to take advantage. He's gonna not he's not gonna abandon Ophelia, but he is going to move out just enough to give him the sneak attack against this Kawatoan right here, assuming he can hit it, which he can. So he steps out, levels his hand crossbow, and buries a bolt in that Kalatoan's inside or side of his neck. And the Kalatoan wobbles just a little before falling over, stealing the kill from Roland and Spirit. Yeah, I don't care. He's dead. I don't kill people. And he moves is, back, drawing his sword. That is my least favorite thing to do. <laughs> Not kill people or kill people? I don't kill people when I'm myself when i am a beast form i don't care go beast mode the... go beast mode beast mode beast so stool juice. only has 10 feet of movement so he doesn't can't really do much bupito on the other hand okay. looks around and finds the largest chunk of monsters lets out a Rah! and starts running towards the oh, coast oh boy oh absolute mad lad what a hero. Trying to, trying to find the biggest cluster of monsters that he can find. Unfortunately, he can't get there and attack at the same time, so there is that. Um, I'm assuming I'm not seen when I take these shots. Yeah, yeah. You are not seen. Fantastic. Oh, I guess it's one shot, but nonetheless. Pew pew. Oof. Wow. Bad news bears. Uh, cunning action. Bonus, yeah, cutting action, <clears throat> uh, pressing up against the wall. What wall? I think it's like right here. Like, that's like, a wall. Yeah, he's yeah, down at the like, bottom there. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you it's, think that was water? Yeah, actually, I did. <laughs> well, then I'd be hiding in the water, but that's, that's all I got. <laughs> Probably a bad idea. All right, the Kalatoans, as you pop out. They seem to recognize you, or not recognize you, they seem to, uh, seem to realize that you're there, but they have an issue that they seem to want to address first. The first one being Jim Jar, and they throw a net on him, oh, or at no. least they try to. Oh no. Fix that. Why did he get dis? Oh, he's blurred. Yeah. Ah, and, but not they that, hit him nonetheless. Yeah, not and now that it matters. he is restrained. And they, he stays right there. And the Kawatoans pretty much ignoring Shushar as they make their way up and try to attack Spirit. Making their way downtown. They seemingly find Spirit a threat. As they should. Rest in peace, Jim J or Bupito. And come up with an automatic miss at Bupito, who in his rage does a little spin and tries to hit him with a war pick and misses. Ugh. So they are doing they're doing equally well. Me. I don't know how the hell I did that. But he runs and gets flanking as he tries to Cut down the Boopito. Not the boops. Oof. We're max damage. All right, Roland. All right. I will cast Fairy Fire. I 
think I have to move. So hold on. Move 15 feet that way. <clears throat> Just so to get, get in range. So I can get all those guys, yeah. Nuts. Yeah. He's got the two, very nice. Yeah, that's Torpedo. Is it two? Did you get two of them, or did you get his? I only got two? two of them. I didn't do Bupedo. I'm pretty sure it's you can choose. Can. No. You can. <laughs> Just trying to help. Uh, not you. That's... Not you. But Obviously not that. me. <laughs> Does anybody need healing yet? Torpedo. Okay, I'll use my bonus action to do healing spirit over there. <laughs> any any excuse you can find, right? Bopito. I'll get rid of this pointer for a second. I'm just gonna move it there, just so it's right beside him. Outstanding. All right, and that's uh, my turn. All right, Kawato in 21. And what was that hide roll from earlier as you popped back around the corner? Oh, mine? Is that 20, 21? Uh, 21. 21. Yeah. He no longer is able to see you. So he moves around. Why are you bully? And they're setting upon the, the master gnome gym jar. I was supposed to be at advantage. It is. Okay, so he misses. Little blurred bastard. And mm -hmm. the leader calls out, screaming at you guys. You will serve the Deep Father. You will serve the will of Limigagoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I, uh, I fucked up. That wasn't supposed to be Healing Spirit, because I would have got rid of Fire Fire. I'll, I'll just say that was a healing word. <clears throat> Not a work. So let's check the range on this spell. It is. This is three creatures within range. And it doesn't have a range. That is inconsiderate. Inconsiderate. But thankfully, I have Fantasy Grounds here to help me out. So. The first thing this creature does is he moves his speed. With no concern for Bupito's attack of opportunity since he already took it. And let's see, how close are you? Oh, yeah. Choosing the three people that he can. There we go. Oh, no. See? He targets you three and he calls out to the Deep Father, provoking a. That's an unusual. Let me check this. It looks like it says zero. Yeah, there we go. So we have a save DC of. See, so you rolled a 16, a 15, and a 20. That's ridiculous. <laughs> We're awesome. Uh, all of you resist his spell, but you feel that he attempted to cast a spell, specifically Ophelia, you identify as Bane. It's like the opposite of Bless, it penalizes your, your rolls. Apparently Lima Gagoon is not with him today. Mm. Aha! Uh, let me, before I do that, just want to make sure that this actually will work. Whew. Like it was meant to be. Coast Jerk is scurries over here. About ready to pull some shit. Let him have it. And he inhales deeply and breathes out a 30 foot 
long uh, wall of fire. Nice. nice. Oh, hell yeah! Nice. And then goes here because that's all he can do. <laughs> I throw a thumbs up over at Coach Jerkis with the grin. You're he awesome. The thumbs up. I'm sorry? That thumbs up gets returned right back. Yeah. Shushar seeing his friend Jimjar surrounded and netted. Well, he, he's netted himself. He's going to try and break out. If he can, he's going to be able to move 30 feet. <clears throat> so when you're netted, you have to spend – you can either not move, which he doesn't want to not move, or he can use its action to make a strength check or attack and damage the thing. He's choosing a strength check, DC 10, to break the net, which he is successful. He gets 30 feet of movement. He attempts to get as close to Jim Jar as he can. They seem to be abandoning their nets. They seem to apparently consider you a big enough threat that they need to knock you unconscious. It is worth noting that they are using the flats or the hard part of their spears as a club not the piercing. They're trying to knock you unconscious, not kill you, for whatever that's worth. Unfortunately for them, <laughs> that won't bring them any mercy from the little little lizard. <laughs> um, I forget, does Jim have two attacks? Uh, I believe he does. should say on his thing you should have two attacks as long as they're melee right but yes he does cool so he's going to uh even though he's got a net on him he's gonna try and poke it with that dagger twice and the uh, buddy in front of him here uh... oh no <laughs> ouch right right why was that a disadvantage he's restrained and that gives a disadvantage does it uh, it should. Good. I can uh, check to be sure, but it, last I checked, it did. I might be mixing it up. Wouldn't yeah, I thought, I thought Restrained was just the one that uh, held you in place, but... It does definitely hold you in place, but I already have up the table. Just Two. making our way through the piece. Speed is zero. Attack rolls against the creature are advantage, and creature's attack rolls are disadvantage, and dexterity saving throws are also a disadvantage. Ah, oh, okay. To be All fair, right. He has a big ass net draped over his shoulders. True. Well, he's a, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, I guess if there's opportunity attacks, he'll dodge them. He'll do that. But we'll we get that going. He's gonna make another attack, right? Miss. Oh, he hit! Holy shit! He hit with, an, uh, with that number. Okay, nice. Um, I didn't ignore that, that opportunity, by the way. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. A um, little bit of damage, a little bit. A little bit of max damage. A little bit of max damage. And then, um, just double checking here. Uh, yeah, that's not going to do. Yeah, that'll be his turn. All right. Well, I'm moving up. I'm as I'm brushing past Shushar. I just, you know, put an apology to him, and I yell, "Hang out, Jim! I'm coming!" <laughs> and much like the last time, I just take my big old stick, whack the dude upside the head. Not He's doing so very well on explain. these. Uh, not doing very well on these here. But I figure I'm going to go ahead. Jim's in trouble. I'm going to go ahead. Flurry of blows. Um, that should have been advantage, but that's still a hit anyway. Well, he's not dead, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Jim ain't dead yet, but I'm going to make sure that he doesn't. And then hit another. Nice. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. 
All right. And that does it for me. Good round. So I can use Guiding Bolt, right? Yes. For yes. Twin. Bro, nice. You didn't have to do it to him. Fuck yes, him up, did. Ophelia. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. So that's that the first one. Who's the second one? You don't have to re-roll. The damage stays. So if it's a crit, it's a crit. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, that's, and I just say that because I didn't mention it last time. That was part of that research I did on Twin Spell. You, you get roll one attack? Yeah. They, it's, it, basically what happens is the, the power and the attack and the damage and the spell slot all come out of Ophelia. And then after it exits, the magic exits her body, it splits in two was the official ruling by Wizards of the Coast. So pretty much. So the fact that that was, what's that? So what you're saying is, basically, which one of these do you want to die? Yeah, which one do you want to fuck up? Yeah, just drop 31 damage on anybody. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ophelia, I, I, I can do it, or you can drag that 31 damage that I just dropped in the chat and just drop it on somebody you hate. I would say, suggest doing one of Bupito's ones. Well, they got fairy fires on, right? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Like, might as well. I'm pretty sure yeah, 31 yeah. damage will kill them. It's just because, like, he's over there alone in, in between. The only rule. I dropped it and then. Okay, which one did you want? It might just be my fault. Which one did you hate? I, I went to drop it on 10. Yeah, didn't, didn't take either way. Didn't, I'll do it on the combat tracker. It wasn't you. Apparently, it didn't take. That's not a thing. Now it's a thing, and now his ass is dead. Yikes. Nice. The only rule on twin spell is you can't hit the same guy twice, which would be ridiculous, ridiculous, because it's already one ridiculous. Now it can't have two ridiculous. Imagine, imagine dealing 62 damage to an enemy on a single turn at level 3. <laughs> yeah, imagine way. the druid having 69 hit points fucking... <laughs> Either way, note to self, don't piss off Ophelia. <laughs> Good advice. I just want to be friends. <laughs> Why can't we be friends as she's exploding their heads? <laughs> hey, I, I try to be friends, Bert. All right. So he cannot, unfortunately, get his sneak attack, but he does get two attacks. The first one misses. And with that, it is his weapon may be stuck. He gets a strength saving throw, DC 11. He prevents that. And another, the second time he hits. I missed that spirit. I thought you had hit with all your attacks so far, but if you missed with one and I missed it, that's on me. If okay. you do miss with a melee attack, there are consequences of it. Okay. I had I had a couple programs up over my screen because I was comparing something real quick, but yeah, for the only or, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll just use it from going forward. Yeah. Stool. No. Stool runs up with his poisonous spore fist advantage. Oh, I thought he just he did 18 hit. damage for a second there. <laughs> He's a beast. You've been holding that on a stool, Jesus. Uh, the battle of the crazies over here with uh, Bupito and his war pick versus the Kawatoan. He's bringing up. He does absolute silch. Up, <laughs> oh, yeah. he, he hits him, but he hits him so weakly that it doesn't penetrate the skin. It might leave a bruise, though. He'll be that's, sore tomorrow. That's rough. Um, that's rough. That's a hard knock life. That's really rough.
I use my uh, movement and then my uh, cunning action for a bonus movement to get back there. And that'll be my turn. So that Kawatoa right there is attempting to stab Bupito and cut him down, and he misses. He's fighting a crazy guy, and he misses. All right, I'm going to actually do a little bit of violence here, but if I, I'm not going to kill him, it's only going to be knocking him out. <laughs> if I can actually do by me. I'm about to do yes. a little bit any, of violence. <laughs> any weapon I'm sorry, that guys. Isn't a I'm doing any a little bit of not a ranged weapon, you can do that. All right. I don't like this as much as like you don't like it either. I have a quick question for you. Um, does that mean that I can do... Uh non-lethal damage with inflict wounds no non any melee attack <laughs> that's not a spell gotta be specific with some damn kobolds <laughs> plus and what is it inflict wounds that's yeah. a cleric spell you don't get that not without cheating <laughs> and that will be it for me So the Kawatoans seem to, seem to, be coming to the realization that they're not doing well. And they don't seem to wait for their leader or have any type of organization, and they start running for the water. Cowards! Get back here and fight! Jimmy will take a opportunity attack on that. At disadvantage, obviously. It should be automatic, one should hope. Double fives. Dang. It wasn't Jimmy's fight, you know? You know, you can't win them all. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Kawatoan monitor doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to recognize any problems here. Not being a big fan, he casts... Shield, I'm sorry, Sacred Flame on Roland, who succeeds. Ah. Poor guy, screw He's got, he's zero for two on his magic. Hmm. Gonna, gonna... Throw a firebolt, I reckon, over, over uh, Roland's shoulder there. Wow, that was fortunate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. Oh. And I'm assuming it's an action to free someone from a net. It is. Okay. Then he'll go over here. So Shushar, not really wanting to, but he's going to, uh, ah, wrong way. He's going to move over here and do a strength check to free his friend from the confines of his people. And he fails to tear the net all the way, but he does damage it a bit. And this Kawatoan breaks for the water, no effort for disengage, leaving Fargus and Stool to take attacks of opportunity. He takes one, that'd be an advantage, but it's not that catastrophic here. I just forgot to click it. As Stool tries to punch him in the back as he runs away, and his one hit point's not going to survive the 2d4 plus one. As Stool kills him as he runs. Nice. Fuck yeah, Stool. That's hardcore. Unfortunately, Jimjar is still netted, so he'll have to use his action for a strength check. Yeah, a strength check? Like, just straight? Yeah, okay. straight. Ooh. All right. No. That's not going to cut it. Um, 
Can he? Well, can he? Uh, no, no, he can't. Never mind. That'll be his turn. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I should have provided the option. I didn't, so I'll let you make a decision if you want to. He can try to cut his way free by rolling an attack roll and doing damage to the net or a strength check. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so he'll try and cut his way out then. Yeah, probably. Just roll a straight attack roll, armor class 10. Oh, that was the wrong one, <laughs> but either way, we'll take the two. Yeah, we'll take the two. Funny how you... attack. <sighs> yeah, did you get this multi attack count? <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah, so <laughs> okay, he missed nice. the first time. He absolutely... Second time, he missed oh. again. <laughs> I, um... I have another quick question too. Um, would Moving he on. attack damage against the net because Shushar is standing next to it? No. <laughs> no. A for effort, though. I say I've already used my feline agility last round, so uh, all I can do is double move, and that does it for me. Yes. So yeah. Next turn, though, unless he survives, I'm going to fuck his shit straight up. Assuming the dice are Assuming with me. Assuming the dice are with me. Well, I took 31 damage to the face, and only he's like an orange, so. I missed what you said, Ophelia. I'm sorry. That was because of me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, I just said I was going to do twins. Just what's better than one twin spell? So uh, just to run a test real quick, Ophelia, can you grab that damage real quick? Uh, not now that it's on your screen, the, the the one that shows the actual dice, and try and drop that one. See if that was the issue on somebody else, whoever else you're attacking. Because you said twin spell. Yes. So you hit sixteen. So you mind grabbing that ten and try and drop it on? Okay. So yeah. So apparently you have to grab the dice. We learned something new today. And he gets disadvantage too, so both of them get disadvantage because it's ridiculous, that's why. All right, so Fargus here, having people killing the one he was uh, trying to kill, and following the almost universal rule of kill spellcasters first, and because he gets advantage and because he gets sneak attack, is going to make his way up here and take care of this... Uh, monitor hopefully fuck him up fargus hell yeah and fargus climbs up his leg and and disembowels him with his short sword all the way from hip to chest spilling his guts all over the place that that is stool's double movement just so you know <laughs> stool's looking out for blood <laughs> he's got a taste Lupito taking advantage of the advantage for his three damage. Sounds about right. Uh, oh, yeah, I can see him from there. Fantastic. Um, actually, hold on, hold on. Do we do this the proper way? I'm going to try and stealth behind this rock back here. Okay. Hmm. Does he see me? <laughs> no. Yay! All right, now I'm gonna say I'm gonna pop out a bit here. I don't know if you can see that movement. Super small. Very I precise. See it barely. Very precise. Excellent. Excellent. Pew. All right. And then. Uh, Drop back around the rock. Duly noted. 
I'll do That's it. it. Right now. The image in my head of what that actually looked like is hilarious. <laughs> Peeks his head out, goes to take, lines up a shot, then just realizes, oh wait, hides behind the rock for a second, then pops out and shoots him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very precise. Uh, you got it way about doing this, you know. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna let that guy run away. Fair enough. And he does. And he splashes in the water, disappearing from sight. That's good. You gotta leave one, right? Yeah, so you can tell his friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you cut down the rest of them. It's fine. It's fine. I didn't kill anybody. Let the record show. <laughs> if we are uh, out of combat, Agile will uh, walk you up are. and I assume that the three of us can get this net off Jim Jar. You can. Unless it's some like Mega Net. <laughs> Mega Is Shushar still restrained too? No, he tore out of his, but he only got 30 feet. The gang's all here. Everyone is here. <laughs> all right. Everybody moving over. Between it all of is... us. It is much quieter, and Shushar says that that is not unexpected, uh, especially as it becomes obvious that you are not – the reason that you are not – we are not easily captured, they will not try. The same reason that you will find <clears> – <throat> same reason you will find the Dwergar and the – Drow are able to trade freely with the Kawatoan is because it's not worth. They can't. They're too much of a threat. They're not going to lose the amount of people they can. If they can, they will. They'll get away with whatever they can. But if they can't, they won't. Yes, his advice is, remains the same. Remain uh, ready and willing to do violence if the need arises and it will discourage violence among his people. Touch of the old ultra-violence. Okay, so um, strike first. Can do, all right. Yep, shoot first, ask questions never. Got it. Which, uh, Ophelia, what, the, what I think that technically means is um, to, to get them to join the Friends Club, you just need to kill a few first, okay? Um, no. Or at least knock him out. Is a uh, win-win. I'm down with knocking some people out. I could do that. Right, right. If I shoot the arrow, hits them in the head, uh, they probably no longer be awake. They're not dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they'll die. Well, yeah, you know. Maybe if I get them just in the right spot. Say a non-lethal punch to the throat. Yes, yes. To say they're probably gonna be having some difficulty breathing for a few minutes, but uh, I'm not gonna kill them. Back information. All right. All right. Does anybody need to heal? No. Are we all okay? Um. Let's see. I'm. I'm down a few hit points, but I mean, I'm good. I mean, I'm. I don't have really to worry about anything. I'm going to save my healing spells. But... Yeah, save them for when we actually need them. Okay, so moving forward, you guys close this map. You have no further need for it. You guys... Uh, Travel a short distance, you're probably, as I said, not too far outside of Slu Blue Dob. As you are nearing, closer anyhow, you see another group of Kawatoans, not 
seemingly ready to ambush, but stalking towards you as you come in sight of the, the actual city. They are larger in terms of uh, people. There are six regular Kawatoans, two of the spellcasters, and at the head of them is a Kawatoan wearing what you assume to be stately attire for Kawatoans. He's draped in various uh, seaweed and shells, got a lot of things attached to his clothing. No big deal. We could take a five minute or let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and take a five minute. We'll pick up after this. Sounds good. Let's go. All right. Cool. Cool.
I'm back. I'm back. Ditto. Very nice. Uh-oh. Yay. All right, break. We are. I just realized that said when you're break. That was weird. <clears throat> the uh, picking back up. Does anybody? Is every? Looks like everybody's back, right? Nobody's having any issues. Nope. Okay. So as I said, just as the town comes into sight, I will give you a description a little later. <clears throat> you guys see a group of Kawatoans walking towards you, six regular Kawatoans, two spellcasters, and a creature that seems to be possibly some type of leader of sorts. He's wearing a big golden, seemingly, uh, chest piece with, or I'm sorry, a belt piece with a gaudy green cloth. He carries a strange-looking scepter. There you go. And if you take a look at that scepter, it is a humanoid female body, naked, with the arms of a crab or a lobster and the head of a crab or a lobster. Huh. Now, they move towards you. They don't move to surround you. They don't move to attack you. And as they move up, the leader, as it seems holds his hand up and his staff and calls out to you. I am Plo Pupin, Archpriest of the Sea Mother, Blib Plop. She answers my prayers by delivering you. Help me and you will be rewarded for your service to her. I just kind of stare openly and just kind of like slowly just glance over towards Shushar. Shushar looks at you and says, Excuse me. Blib Dolv Pop is the sea mother, goddess of my people. I have never heard of the other creature that. He, the previous Kawatoans spoke of, and in response, the creature looks and says, <clears throat> Limadagoon is the deep father, and my daughter worships him, creating sectarian violence in Sloop de Blob. If you aid me, you will receive rewards from the Sea Mother. They are a cult. They blaspheme against the Sea Mother. So I just kind of silently turn to the rest of the group and just kind of like, well, I turn to the, the head man and say, give us a second. And I just kind of huddle around the group and just say, uh, so what do we think, boys? Is this guy legit? He gives us stuff. Perhaps um, we should uh, find out more about the 
quote unquote stuff he shall give us, yeah? Easy stuff. Um Yes, yes. Uh, Spirit, uh, you have a repair. You keep you keep the conversation. Uh, find out what is stuff, you know? I kind of look Shushar over my... Shushar kind of waves... Shushar kind of waves his hands and says, that would be a bad idea. I am considered an exile. Hmm. I would poison your relations here. I say, we really don't want to... We're kind of in the business of uh, making friends here. The the more allies we have, the better, obviously. Roland doesn't really want to take part in religious feuds. Understandable. <clears throat> but, but I'll we, go with the group. If we help this guy out, we can at least probably secure a boat. Boat is stuff. So the, he steps forward, seemingly slightly agitated, and starts to speak again, seemingly pleading his case. Slew Blue Dog has lived harmoniously with the Sea Mother for years, with occasional visionaries stirring up trouble. And he turns and gives Shushar a kind of a wall-eyed glance. A few weeks ago, my daughter, Blob Lip Plop, she became, received a vision from her great deep father, Lima Gagoon, proclaiming him the new god of our people. She's had a great increase in her magical powers, and we are split in two, fighting amongst ourselves. I have a plan. They have begun sacrificing humanoids to their evil god in the dark lake they sent out a force to capture you i came out to rescue you and if you help me i can end it and repay your service well i don't think we really have much else to lose Um, great, uh, uh, major boss man priest. Um, uh, what, what services, uh, could you render towards us then? For example, uh, a member of our party, he is, um, well, sick with the mummy touch, you know? And, uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps preemptively as a son of good faith, you could restore, uh, restore him to a, to full health. Yes. I am Plo Pupin, Archpriest of the Sea Mother. I can try. Oh boy. Fuck it, let's go! <laughs> let's do it! <laughs> I step forward yes. and, and kneel down before them. Bowing my head. No need to bow before Pope <laughs> I immediately stand back up. Bow before the Sea Mother. <laughs> immediately get back out on my knees. <laughs> and we will, I will take you to my house, and we will discuss the plan. The gate guards will attack you if you do not have an escort. Understood. You agree? You will work with me? Let's say I turn to the rest of the party and just uh, gauging everyone else's reactions first. Kostrukas is grinning widely and giving two thumbs up. Let's say I know Roland wants to abstain from, from voting on this. Yep. Slash vote will allow you to cast put a vote slot forward slash vote space the word vote space and then whatever your vote is you can throw it up and you can double click roll in to refuse to participate well, 
us <laughs> get stuff. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All righty. Well, it seems we're in agreement here then. I don't need stuff. <laughs> Just say I turn back to the uh, the head priest and I nod my head and I said we will offer whatever assistance we can uh, we can give. So he turns and his his people surround you and uh, they keep their distance. And they make their way into the town of Slubludab. And that town is right here. So uh, a couple of the things as uh, you are, the map's coming in as it comes in. <clears throat> you can uh, adjust it as necessary. I'm not going to necessarily put you on the map because it's not necessary right now. If you guys start a fight, we'll, we'll burn that bridge when we get there. <clears throat> but a couple of the things that you notice as you approach Slubludab. As you're approaching the gate, you notice that it is enclosed in outer walls made up of heavy nets and sharp bone hooks woven into them. In the middle of each wall is the gate, which allows you to pass through. But one of the things that seems a bit odd is you're you're pretty much struck with the impression that the buildings as well as the walls and everything in this town is built as if it were underwater the architectural choices have caused a number of areas along their wall to collapse because it's not seemingly built to uh, survive above the uh, surface they've they've repaired the uh cave-ins as it were and there are areas when it would be or would have caved in but and so they just piled stuff up in the in the broken gap so it's definitely not the best architectural choices they could have made their buildings are made that way and as you are as you are allowed through the gate and they uh they do allow you bowing before the leader plopine and you notice that uh, of the four guards, one of them bows slightly less reverently than the other three. But you are let into the gate nonetheless. <clears throat> As you guys pass through, the creatures seem to have an, a, a unique and alien way of functioning. For example, two creatures standing and having a conversation uh, just inside of the gate are circling each other. And you can imagine as they're talking, they're just both going in circles instead of standing still. They're not actually, you know, progressing one way or another. They're leaving tracks in the sand. But your presumption as you look at them is they're, they're behaving as if they were underwater. They, they seem to be definitely functioning as if they had to maintain their motion to keep from sinking. And there are a couple other unusual sights as you move your way through the town. Uh, one of them is that a, a leader of sorts is speaking to a small crowd, and you do hear the name Limagagoon once or twice. And there are two of the Kawatoans on their hands and knees, and the leader Kawatoan is standing on their backs. So he's elevated above the others in that fashion. And that is definitely something that seems a little odd. Catches you off guard. The uh, leader there takes you guys through. I mean, somebody asked if they could come in and watch a little bit. So he takes you guys through, and you guys pass through to... I'm going to throw a P on here for you guys just to make it a little easier for you guys to see where you're at. We're going to have somebody join the chat. He wants to uh, do a little observing. We'll put you guys right here. And as you, you go into the house just south of there, you do pass right by that statue. And the statue is strange but familiar. It is a nine-foot-tall 
statue. Its body is roughly carved for some type of driftwood in the shape of a humanoid female. Its head and forearms formed from the severed head. Uh, the body is wood, uh, but the head and <clears throat> claws of a giant crayfish are white. It appears to be albino, but they've lashed the claws and the head to this female wooden body using the guts of the crayfish. And as you get close to it, it is a powerful, overwhelming stench of just rotting, rancid shellfish. So it's pretty, it's been there for a while. At the ground of that statue, there are shells, brightly colored stones, mushrooms, and rotting fish are piled at the statue's feet, strung in garlands of everything from netting to guts. And around the statue on each corner, you see four very stern Kawatoans. And much like the ones that were conversing, they are swimming in a circular fashion, as if they were swimming, around. And they are doing their best not to touch it. There uh, are a few others milling by, just kind of peasantly tossing shells at the statue, bowing repeatedly, chanting, things of that nature. Flo Popine turns to the south and takes you, and his guards for that matter, in through the uh, building to the south here. You don't need to mess with that token. I will manage it. When he takes you in, he takes you into the house and dismisses some of the guards. He keeps the two spellcasters. And there are a number of things. The first thing he does when he walks in is walks over to a stool or chair and climbs up atop it, putting himself a, at least on par with Roland and above the rest of you. And when he notices that he is on par with Roland, he gets down and he goes and finds a couple other various objects, stacks them on the stool, and then climbs onto the stool on top of the object so that he is above Roland <laughs> before he turns back and looks at you guys and says, Welcome to Slugadop, the home of the Kawatoans and servants of the Sea Mother. Do you still wish to aid us? I said we would offer assistance whenever we could, or wherever we could. What are you looking for, Agile? It's, uh, what the like, like? Does he have anything like uh, like badass in here? Any weapons? Any uh, any treasures? Any you know? Like I'm not paying attention to the conversation. I'm walking around, taking a look around. Does he have any ruins squared away anywhere? Mm -hmm. No, it's it's a whole lot of junk and fancy shells. As far as hey, you hey, one man's junk is another man's dawnbringer. You know, you know, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. All right. So he says, "I." He looks at you guys and kind of makes sure, and he kind of clears his voice in a watery fashion before trying to get Agile's attention before he starts speaking, feeling a, he needs everybody's attention. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, proceed, proceed. Once he gets your attention, he kind of clears his throat, looks at everybody, and he says, This is the plan. I will offer you as sacrifices to the deep father. You Sacrifice! <laughs> I will offer token peace and reconciliation with my daughter. Say she I... is the archpriest of Limagagoon, the upstart god. I will offer you as token prizes and sacrifices as peace. And when we get close during their ritual, before probably, you are sacrificed to 
the Deep Father. We will eliminate this cult once and for all. Probably. <laughs> Well, to be fair, nobody can be a hundred percent sure of anything, so I appreciate your honesty. I, I, I... We go where the sea mother's currents take us. Right, right, yes, yes. Say, I grip my quarter staff a little harder, and I said, "Now these sacrifices, this is a ruse, yes. You're not planning on actually sacrificing us." I assure you, I will not be the one who is sacrificing you. <laughs> well, that doesn't you know, allay my fears anymore. <laughs> you know, you have you have good plan, but how about how about we try this? How about I make the plan, and then it will work? Yes. So, um, we do your plan, except except as uh, some of the more sneaky members, like <clears throat> you know, some of the good ones, uh, uh, we shall uh, just kind of be nearby and uh, sneak attack and. Um, uh, uh, before the ritual is done, you know, uh, saving everybody, being great heroes, and uh, and still achieving uh, your goal. Is that yes? We do that. Well, we need enough sacrifices so Bloblipod will be willing to accept for Lima Gagoon ritual. So we're we talking need... like. Like two sacrifices, yes. Two of the sneaky, the others sacrificed. Probably not. Probably not. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. That's uh, turning to the group. This sounds good. No, it is no way it goes wrong. Except probably maybe it goes good. I'll be a sneaky oh. cat. I mean, it, it makes some sense if I beat the sneaky one too. You know, it's uh, you know, kind of what I'm good at. But uh, you know, it's whatever, true. whatever. But if like, you guys can, want me to sacrifice, I sacrifice. You know, I can turn into like a crag a cat or a tiger, and they're both pretty sneaky. So, cats are sneaky. <laughs> Don't I know it? I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Um, to be most effective, um, could you perhaps uh, try and um, remove the curse on my friend here first, you know? We have learned after doing business with the drow. Services first, reward second. Plus, I must pray to the Sea Mother and beg her to grant me the magic to remove said affliction. Um, Ophelia, what do you think? You think maybe you could, uh, you know, sweet talk this guy and get him to maybe, uh, you know, take the mummy touch away from uh, spirit? Somebody want to try to, yeah, persuade? I'm just doing an insight to see if he's, like, kind of telling the truth about taking us, because I kind of have a sneaking suspicion he's working against us. You'll need to do that at disadvantage, because the Kawatoans are so incredibly alien to you. Okay. I'll just roll again, then. Yes, please. That's not so bad. So, as far as you can tell, he he doesn't really care about you. He doesn't seem like he's putting any effort into stopping you or preventing you from being sacrificed or sacrificing you. As best as you can tell, he really just wants to kill her. Okay. So, I mean, he seems like he's not really concerned about you, for good or bad. You're you're a hammer. Means to an end. He wants to hit a nail. Yeah, okay. Um, do we keep our stuff? Uh, 
Yes. You will keep your equipment. All of the Kawatoa have no interest in taking equipment. It would serve as a valuable sacrifice. The agreement is... After he hears Ophelia's uh, impassioned persuasion, what is it you're asking for, Ophelia? Uh, I'm asking for the cure up front. We are not drow, and we are not liars. Um, so you will not deal with us as we are drow. You will deal with us as what we are. Now heal my friend, please. He says, yes, you are not, you are not drow, but you are surfacers, which is not much better. But, in fairness, the ritual is tomorrow. I will give you freedom of the town tonight. I will pray to the Sea Mother. And upon rising, I will cast my spell and cure your friend before the ritual. Hmm. Yay. I still have a very... Agreed. Di I hesitantly nod. I don't trust this man, but I will hold him to his word. Does, every does everyone agree, or...? Roland just appears indifferent. Yes, yes, agreed, agreed, yes. Okay. No, but I think maybe we should add uh, one thing, no? And uh, and and Smoke will point at uh, Coast Jerkus and say, "This is the baby dragon, you see. And um, if you um, fuck with us, uh, the baby dragon uh, burn you, eat you, poop you out later. Okay? Yes. It's good. He kind of eyes." He kind of eyes Coach Jerkus skeptically for just a second, kind of assessing him. Let's not resolve things that way. The sea Mother killed many dragons. You not be the last. Well, yes, let's just not let it come to that, because um, uh, I, I do not like the smell of burnt fish, you know? Anyways, we shall find a place to sleep. Good, good evening. No, you, you must sleep here. You are prisoners. But eh, eh. prisoners allowed to go free in the town, but you must appear to be prisoners, and prisoners sleep in the house of those who own them. But I will give you a back room. You go, buy things, do business, come back tonight. Then you go be fake sacrifices, probably. Right, it sounds good. Okay. Uh, let's go check out the town, everybody. Making our way downtown. Walking fast. That's going to be our theme song for this whole adventure. So, uh, so he just lets us uh, like straight up leave, right? Like no guards following us. He or does, like that? and and you pretty much once you guys get outside and and walking in that town, you've figured out pretty much a number of things. Number one, there's probably about 500 Kawatoans in this this little town. Right. So if you were to hypothetically say "fuck this," I'm leaving. No, you're not. Right. Right. There aren't there aren't enough twin guided bolts to to put down 500 Kawatoans. Uh, I, can well, only, I can only bash so many heads in with my stick before uh, I get overwhelmed, I assume. So, <laughs> which is probably a good how reason many, why how I... How many attacks you think, how many attacks you think you're going to get when they get 500 between each of yours? Uh, not nearly enough. <laughs> so, um, do not, uh, do not separate. Um, at least remain in, uh, in partners. Have your, have your partner, your buddy, you know, um, 
I am I'm gonna disguise myself as a Kawatoan so I can walk around a little bit more freely. And and seeing that like as long as you allow us to see this. Yep. Um you guys can see I'll try to do it away from any other Kawatoans. Pass- seeing you kinda of do that, like and impressed by it. Um perhaps uh, see if you can uh, learn more about this other cult, no? Oh boy. Just, just you know, do not even speak. Just listen, uh, mingle, you know. Uh, yeah, go mingle to any... the crowds. Yes, yes, and just see what you can learn. Um, yeah, try everybody... not to call attention to yourself. <laughs> well, I'm going to walk around like I'm swimming, like everybody else. Good, good. It is a good strategy. Um, perhaps uh, perhaps uh, Jim Jack uh, comes with me and... Uh, and I shall do some some snooping as well, uh, but you know, very sneaky like. So uh, Shushar will go with uh, Roland if you want. Sure. Kind of g- guide you on the idiosyncrasies of imitating a Kawatoan. Sounds good to me. All right, I'll just stay with Fargus, Kozjerkus, and Ophelia then. Okay. Okay. So. Uh... We'll start with the main group. As for uh, Roland, because you're not alone, you don't take disadvantage on any social interactions. Uh, this is something we haven't done a lot, but it's uh, it's worth the time. So when you, for example, say you're in a tavern or walking around a town and you're trying to learn stuff, uh, there's a couple different ways you can do it. When it's a general role, the uh, perception and investigation are, are where it comes in. You're going to be walking around town using perception to hear things and investigation to put together various pieces of information that you've picked up. For example, you roll a perception, you get a 20. That may, That's going to make the check, hypothetically, of putting the pieces of information together lower because you've gathered more pieces. A lower perception is going to make the check higher. So that's the interaction mm. between the two. So, and I'm sure <clears throat> I'm not positive, but I think Alex probably knows a little bit about that, having run water deep. Yep. I think that's a information gathering. I'm not sure if that's how that uh, particular campaign instructs DMs to do it, but that's the general rule. Unless it's something specific, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, very specific. You actually have to talk to somebody. But yep. uh, so, Roland, I'm going to need a perception, and then an investigation. It'll be at your discretion. It's regular because Shushar helping you removed disadvantage. As for the rest of you, where are you heading? What type of things are you looking for in town? So me and Jim Jar trying to um, as stealthy as possible, you know, like keep into the shadows and trying to stay out of sight lines of people and whatnot. Um, Literally check every single building if we can. Well, that would take um, you hours. Um, the vast, like, vast, oh. vast majority of these are going to be just houses. Yeah. So like up houses. So like not going into the houses and like scouring about, right? But just like like poking our heads through windows and like in doorways a little bit, right? And um, right. and basically looking for what do they have in terms of weapons? What do they have so in terms of like? Is there like a bank? Or, you know, like a, like a, a central loot location, stuff like that, you know? So, if you, so you're looking for actual, like, a, a equipment, right? Yeah, equipment and or um, if there's anything else here, like, that, there's that one statue that's interesting. Is there anything else around that is of particular interest? So here is, with the circle around it, is a area, that area with the smoke coming out of it is a trader. He's a trader, a general trader. He seems to make do trading with the boats that come into harbor. And the only other thing in town you pick up is here. <clears throat> it's a square around it, and that's a butcher, a fisher. Uh, they sell food. Mm-hmm. So as for Roland moving around, the general impression you and Shushar get is exactly that, that um, – the Sea Mother has been the general dominant religion, and it's the one that most people are definitely members of. But 
recently the uh, lady, the daughter of the leader, Ploplopine, is returned with this magical power. Her power has grown. They've been making blood sacrifices towards this new god known as the Deep Father, Limigagoon. <clears throat> And with each sacrifice, she seems to be growing in power. And now it's basically come, become a sectarian uh, religious uh, feud. It's not a war, but it's definitely cult reaching to the point where there's people having heated arguments in the street between the powers of the Deep Father and the Sea Mother. So it's definitely – the tensions in town are pretty clear to you. They're coming to a head if if it's not resolved in the near future, it's going to break out in violence. And based off of what Plo Copine told you, it's going to break out in violence because of you. But um, all of you attempt to make your way towards, as you're exploring, this area is guarded heavily. You can see there is some type of shrine back there, but they're actually crowded around it to prevent you from getting there. <clears throat> and they become very hostile if you even suggest like you're going to try and lean around them or anything like that. So yeah, it, it's definitely best avoided. The uh, docks, on the other hand, have numerous boats. Most of the boats are made of one of two types, mushroom cap boat or raft. Uh, just tied together some mushroom stalks. So a little uh, market here. And as you guys go in, the shopkeeper seems to be a little more accustomed to dealing with non-Kawatoans. And as you move around, he basically has anything, just for simplicity, anything on the player's handbook that is that counts as adventuring gear, and I'm going to share links with you guys. That's the wrong one. So as far as weapons, <clears throat> weapon choices, you have – let me make – let me see if I can share this whole sheet with everybody. Yes, I can. So as far as weapons, I just shared the sheet. You'll have to scroll down a little bit because I can't share just the table. At least I don't think I can. I lied. You can close that. I'll share the table. I misled you. I was a, not a nice person. But if you, you you can scroll down and to the uh, weapons table, or I will share it with you. The only options to buy are simple weapons, ranged not included. So I'm going to share this weapons table with you guys each and let you take a look at it. And if uh, you have a desire, you can buy a weapon. Ophelia... And coasters. I, I do realize some of you don't need it, but I do want to share it. So if you do want to buy any armor, you can. I'm sorry, weapons, you can. Armor, all they have for you guys is shields. And I'm just going to... Let's see if I can pop a shield in here. What kind of money so, are we looking at having? Well, I'm gonna deal with that next. So I just popped a, I just popped a shield in the chat, so it'll tell you how much that is. So now I'll let you guys look at the weapons table. Uh, as far as money for you guys, let's pop up here. So <clears throat> on the party sheet, I have three garnet rings for sale. There's some longbows which I'm gonna get rid of here. Does anybody have anything on their sheet that they want to sell for party money before I split it up between everybody? Because he will absolutely buy those rings, so you guys are going to get some money. And somebody's going to need to grab Anna Ray's decanter. I don't care who takes it. Somebody will have to take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I, I can sell that, that jewel thing I have. Your crown? No. 
the the uh, emerald. I can sell. I can sell. Okay. Uh, if you just want to, do you mind if I drag it off your sheet? Yeah, you can have it. I was already I was already on your sheet trying to figure out, but there it is. Magic just to confirm, you sold the decanter. <laughs> Just to confirm, uh, you said only simple weapons, yeah? Correct. Okay. What'd you say about the decanter? If, if we accidentally sold it. No, I got it. That'd be rough. Yeah, I'd say so. All right. So, selling that and splitting the money between all of you, that gives you each 16 gold and four silver with three silver remaining in the party sheet. <clears throat> so you can buy a shield. You can buy any of the uh, weapons that you desire. Or the table I'm sending now to each of you. Roland, you're going to have that option too. Did you want to look at weapons? I didn't think you did. No, I'm good, thanks. D I'm going to send you the adventuring gear table. It should pop up. Let me know if somebody doesn't get it. Everybody should have it right now. So you can buy anything on the adventuring gear table that is of a value of 20 gold pieces or less. So acid vial, 25 gold pieces, they don't have it. I will leave it to you guys to look at your discretion. You don't need to be in a hurry. My my estimation was we were going to take some time for this. I accidentally X'd out of that last one. You Can you reset it to me? Yep. One second. I didn't look at the value of a shield, to be honest. I should have. Ten gold. I did it. Ten gold. So if you want a shield, it's ten gold. And it increases your armor by two if you use it, obviously. If you're not a shield user, like certain small dragons that threaten to burn fish. <laughs> Would I be able to benefit from a shield? You know, I, I don't know. I think monks do. I can you use your? I, that. I don't know well, if you can do your furry or flurry of blows though. If you have a shield in your offhand. So unarmored. Let's see. Beginning at first level while wearing no armor and wearing no shield or not wielding uh -huh. a shield. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of barbarians because can they can wear shields, right? Some one of those classes can. Yes. Use Yes, barbarians can. Um, Ophelia probably doesn't have any armor or weapon she wants, I'd wager. Neither does Coach Jerkis. Indomitable, maybe? It maybe doesn't matter. Do. I'm not... It doesn't matter. If I, if, uh, my, if wearing a shield um, you know, makes me not able to use my unarmored defense, because unarmored defense beginning at first level says that I must not be wearing an, uh, no armor and not wielding a shield either. So if I'm not wielding a shield or wearing armor, then my armor class equals 10 plus my dexterity modifier plus wisdom. So that's about right. I actually, I actually am, I'm better just not having a shield than I would be actually having one. That's fair. So. I bought two things of rope. Rope it is. Now, um, the this uh, twenty eighty is that like twenty eighty each, or is that twenty eighty to be split across the whole party? It's already uh, split. Already split. It's already split. Okay. That's just letting you know what the total was. It, does oh, it that's show what... you how much if you guys scroll up? Yeah, I, I see. I have like four silver pieces and eighteen gold pieces. So okay, so that's already been split then. Um, yes. Okay, just making sure I ain't going mad.
Uh, since you guys have very little money, I would recommend that you at least consider discussing with each other what you're buying. The reason why mm. is because you don't want uh, all of you spending money on rope, for example. I have an idea. I can use my, my four silver the rope. <laughs> What's that? I say I have an idea. Uh, I can use my four silver pieces to buy four flasks of oil. Because I know Coach Jerkis can breathe fire. If I can throw like a flask of oil at somebody and like Coach Jerkis can light them up, they take additional fire damage. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Like, I'm not entirely certain how, you know, useful that would be, but... Burn them! Uh, Tony, while I'm walking around, I'm also going to be asking about how to procure a boat. Okay. If I can. Uh, multiple, multiple, multiple Kawatoans. Like, like taxi driver in India style, multiple <laughs> Kawatoans are trying to, like, get you to, to give them your business. Okay, cool. So, there's no I mean, lock Pretty much that. all of them. Every single one of them owns a boat. Damn, well, are, or are willing to steal a boat. <laughs> nice. I uh, I grabbed a uh, grapple hook, by the way. Nice. Grab one now. A grappling hook. Nice, nice. A hook for grappling. Okay, so what about the rest of you? Is anybody... How about this? Does it, uh, Spirit and, and Ophelia, Coach Jerkus, you guys let me know when you... I'm good, actually. I don't... Yeah, I don't think I really need anything, personally. Yeah, I don't need anything else. Might I uh, just recommend um, everybody get a water skin? Because, uh, you know, it's uh, good, good, just good for holding the water. That's actually a good idea. Yeah, not a bad idea. Um. And if we ever find anything uh, more fun than water, you know, perhaps, you know, you fill the water skin with that, you know? Like poison. Eh, no, that's what I meant. Lots but, of um, poison. Right, right. Uh, no, my little dragon friend. I meant something you would want to drink, but um, but I guess poison uh, could be interesting. Yes. Okay, it sounds like everybody's good with the purchasing. You guys can close that stuff, and you have your food. And <clears throat> so. Uh... Roland, the majority of people are willing to take you. Their their prices are just wildly inconsistent. Um, many of them want food and treasures. If there's lots of uh, agreement, but uh, about the best price you're going to find is a uh, Kawatoan willing to guide you for a minimum of ten gold. And the f question they're asking is, where? Where are you guys wanting to go? So that this is a good time to have that conversation. It was Jim Jar's home, right? Somewhere in there. Or Cracklestuck? Is that where we're going? Cracklestuck. Right, which I believe is the um, Duragar home, no? Or the Duragar yeah, home? It but it's on the way to Jim Jar's place, right? Maybe. I don't know. Yes. Um. This is a good idea. Yes, but I uh, just uh, out of curiosity, um, uh, Fargus. Um, where again was that uh, uh, Latinese uh, ruin that you were down here to find? One second, please. I'm in no rush to get anywhere. I have lived long enough. To just enjoy my time. Well, I seem to remember Fergus saying something about a um, a Latinese uh, or no, sorry, a Netherlandese 
uh, maybe I say it wrong, I don't know, but uh, a ruins. Um, and I, I vaguely remember him saying something about uh, being on the dark lake. In the dark lake. If I level up one more time, I can turn into something that swims. I what? do not know what you mean by level up, but that is interesting. If I gain more knowledge and experience. <laughs> <laughs> Is is um, Roland still a Kawato at this point? Uh, yeah, it lasts an hour, but I don't know how long we've been walking around. I'm gonna say yes. That's a good executive decision, yeah. Seeing as we have the time, uh, bets, bets. Who who wants to bet that the the Deep Father is a demon? Yeah, I I just have a bad feeling that he's going to do something real nasty to us. <laughs> I feel like he's actually going to be on the father of the water, the water father side, actually, in the end. I think, think so, yeah. okay. I think so. I hope you're right. You think you're going to get sacrificed? I think he's wanting us to get sacrificed. Absolutely. I don't trust the DM anymore. Uh, I apologize. I missed part of that question. I, um... You were asking about Blingdenstone and Gracklestug, yes. uh, I believe. So uh, <clears throat> your general options from here are, according to the map, as well as Jim Jar and uh, Bupido, is that, and it, it is worth noting, I've mentioned it before, but I haven't mentioned it in uh, probably five or six games. Bupido is very calm and soft-spoken when not in battle. So he's very helpful. Very uh, polite. He's nice, but he's a little crazy ass in battle. But <clears throat> so Gracklestug is the capital city of the Dwer the Dwergar, and to a smaller extent, the Darrow. We covered that a little bit. They used to be slaves. Now they're just third class citizens. And the uh, Blingdenstone is the recently reclaimed home of the, the Deep Gnomes. The uh, Deep Gnomes lived in Blingdenstone for many, many years, many, many centuries. And they were cast out. Their city was destroyed by the drow about 100 years ago. And they've recently started reclaiming it. So it's still in a state of being reclaimed. <clears throat> uh, uh. But it is... It is occupied. They do have a deep gnome presence. It is inhabited, not just by military. It actually has deep gnomes in it. So in terms of traveling from here to uh, those two places, it's almost the same. The difference is if you want to travel to Blingdenstone, you're going to travel part of the way via boat and then the remainder of the way via um, on foot. Jim Jar will go along with you either way. He would prefer to make his way back to Blingdenstone eventually. But from here, from Slu Blue Dop to Gracklestug is walking roughly 20 days. If you do it over water, it's going to take you the, <clears throat> the general implication. We're going to cover this again next, or when you get in on the water, but uh, the general assumption is that you're going to take uh, shifts rowing. You can travel, for example, a mile, uh, mile and a half per hour. Depends on the currents. If you just float, it's going to be about an hour or a mile a, per hour, but about a mile and a half per hour. So if you were to take shifts, for example, two people or a person rowing or two people rowing, for eight hours or four hours and then sleeping you could move 24 hours a day as opposed to walking eight hours for that reason your travel time from slu blue dob to grackle stug is going to be between six and seven days hmm. traveling to blingdenstone you're going to travel roughly five to six days on the water and then an additional three days across land Approximate. So those are your Menzo Baranzan is up there, but it, it, I'm, I'm assuming that's not a goal you guys want to head up to. Very correct. Stool, 
would like to head towards his home of Neverlight Grove, but you would have to pass by Gracklestug, and then so you would have to to get to Neverlight Grove. Stool can't give you exact directions, but you could probably travel roughly seven days over the water and the same amount of time over land to reach his home. Um, in and along all those lines, uh, does does the map location of uh, Fargus's Netherese ruins somewhere fit somewhere in there? So, yes. So uh, the Netherese ruins are north of Gracklestug. So you would pass by Gracklestug, and then it'd be your estimation. Now this is all an estimate. Would be if you were to travel to those ruins, it would be about seven days on boat, and about four days about three days south of Neverlight Ruin Grove, which is what Stool tells you his home is called. So just a, just a picture in my head. So theoretically we could go Gracklestug and then the, um, um, Ruins. Well, yeah, it's about uh, the ruins in the lake, but... Yes. Uh, it, Gracklestug's a little bit out of the way, uh, but not... Like, if you were to go straight to Neverlight Grove, it'd be faster. So if you went to, if you sailed to okay. Gracklestug, landed there, it'd be six or seven days, and then from Gracklestug to the ruins, it'd probably be four or five days, and then the, roughly four or five days north of that is going to be three to four days north of that is going to be Neverlight. How's that sound? I go where the wind takes me. There is no wind. It's underground. <laughs> There's wind. I can feel it. <laughs> you crazy. No, it's just you can feel it up here, just not down there. I mean, the only other thing to consider, I suppose, um, I, I'm, I'm sorry bringing it up, but uh, um, Spirit, I mean, where do you think uh, your family is at this point? If I had to guess, I would say most likely Menzo Baron's end, but... I think that's where you should go. I mean, uh, we could try and infiltrate the city and uh, find and rescue your family, but... Um, I well. have a... I mean, there's ten of you. How many drow can there be? I just get the feeling that heading there now would be a bad idea. I get the feeling, though, that's where my destiny ultimately, ultimately lies, though. You know, um, uh, I am here for a precise purpose. Um, my my father sent me to, well, he did not send me, but I, I'm here for my father to find uh, this legendary blade, as you all know. And... Um, uh, in the process, you know, um, if I can help any of you uh, or, or your families, I certainly shall. But um, uh, indeed, I, I wish not to go to Mesoberazon uh, when, you know, there's there's a decent chance that then uh, I would not be able to ever leave there and therefore never um, bring honor to my father. I understand. I'd actually want to search somewhere else first because I really do not like the idea of them being there. I mean, uh, there was a, a, a trade. Remember when we were when we were prisoners, we saw the Duragar trading uh, slaves with the drow. Perhaps, you know, perhaps, perhaps. your family could be, uh, you know, in Gargolstug or, you know, the place of the, of the Duragar. That is a possibility. Why don't we check there first? Hmm. Hmm. Um. Along those lines, uh, just at the uh, pure, pure curiosity, uh, I feel like I, I uh, Roland seems to go where the wind takes him, which is, you know, a uh, very, uh, very um, honorable. And I and I know that my little friend uh, Kos Jerkis, he very much wishes to become a dragon. Yes. Which uh, Vinas, yes. 
But um, but uh, dear Queen Ophelia, uh, why why does one so fair as you uh, even find yourself down here? I find myself looking for my mother. I heard that there is a place um, where she might be down here, and so I came searching. You poor child, you've lost family too then. <laughs> yes. I just immediately like reach out to her and just pull her into a hug. And I hug you back. A few um, tears fall down my face. Do do you, did you uh, hear of a location or um, a, a destination? I also heard it might be around uh, Minzo Baranzon, but uh, there's no way to be sure. Oh boy! Indeed. Then I am. Um, I have a proposal. What if, uh, I mean, uh, and looking at the group, um, anyone who who wishes to uh, to assist anyone, you know, and assist the 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 group's cause, um, you know, will will happily have you. But uh, um, I think it is fair to say we must we must return this young one to his home. Uh, Stool is not a uh, though he did beat the shit out of that one uh, Krakatoan back there, but. Um, I think, I think, uh, we probably should take him home, yes? I agree. Agreed. Okay. And yeah. then, yeah, yeah. And then, um, you know, uh, if Popito wants to get home, we can help him. Uh, same with, uh, with Jim Jar. Um, I do think there is value in, in seeing where Fergus, uh, will take us because, uh, if we are going to a place such as Mental Burns on, um, well, having a glowing fire sword, you know, could be very useful. Fargus speaks up and says he's he's more than happy to travel with the group, um, but if the if the group's eventual destination is Menzo Baranzan, that's that's something different. Uh, if the uh, <clears throat> group's intended goal is to get out of the Underdark then there aren't many creatures that know how. The Underdark, you can wander in the Underdark for centuries and never find the surface. So an additional aspect is when when and if you find we find ourselves in Gracklestug, Blingdon Stone, Menzo Barons, and, and not slaves, we're going to probably want to take time to try and find a way to the surface because it's it's having traveled from the surface down here voluntarily, which seemingly is different from the rest of you. It is not so easy to get back. My map was lost. The, 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 the person carrying the map back was killed. So it is definitely something you should understand. If you plan on leaving the Underdark, you're we can't just wander up until we find it. It's, it doesn't work like that. We're going to have to find a guide to, or at least a map to, to help us get out. Yes, yes. But um, to leave without uh, to leave without what we came here for in so many a case um well i i speak only for myself but uh i i, I shall not be leaving until i can uh, fulfill my original task and it isn't uh it isn't without saying that it seems we have some followers pursuers But I say, and that's exactly why we need to take a boat, because we literally don't have any other choice. I mean, we could go ahead and take, you know, the high road and uh, the long way around by t taking uh, the path out of uh, Slu Blue Dop here. But we know that, you know, Novara and her shit kicker squad is going to be waiting and wait, lying in wait for us. <laughs> 
So that option is pretty much more or less officially off the table. Because we are in no position to, to deal with them at this point in time. Would it perhaps make a sense? Um, still, uh, and like I'll pick them up. Still, do you think um, the drown know where your home is? He doesn't believe they would, but he can't say. He's he was he was stolen on a migration. He's never interacted with any creatures outside of his own people before this. We might be able to, um, instead of going to Grakostag and making our way to Stool's home, perhaps if if it's if it's possible, uh, go to Stool's home first. Um, I would guess that the Dra would not know to follow us there, and that we might be able to lose them in the process. Makes sense. I'm okay with it. That's worth a shot. And then our little friend here can, uh, you know, be home. <laughs> at least, at least one of us can find peace for a time, you know. Um, well, it sounds like we have a bit of a plan. And uh, Roland, you say uh, there is there is many a ship we can uh, purchase. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Most reasonable seems to be about ten gold pieces. So. I mean, I have 10 gold pieces. Do we leave now? If you don't want to deal with the religious issues, then yes. I mean, the one thing is it would be very good to get um, the mummy touch off of the uh, spirit here, yes? Yes. Yes, but that is also something that we can hold off on until we uh, find someone else uh, far more trustworthy. Because while, while, while we did agree to help this person, I don't trust this man as far as I can throw him. Are there any healer shops in here anywhere? No, ma'am. It seems that the clergy is strictly limited to the worshippers of um, the Sea Mother and Deep Father. And your interactions as Roland moves around are that the Deep Father people, if you approach them and they can pull it off, they're going to kidnap you and sacrifice you. If they, if they can do it in, without people seeing, the only thing preventing them from kidnapping Roland as he walks around, even as a Kaladoan is other people being around. So yeah, they're they're definitely not helpful. And you're talking about some pretty powerful magic level level three spell. It's not on the small side of magic. Not to mention if we make a break for it, I mean who's to say that they're not gonna start chasing us down. Well, as of now, we're only allowed to be here because we are so-called prisoners of this place. So even if we tried to get a boat, we probably wouldn't be allowed to leave. Uh, that is true. Hmm. Well, uh, we are going to save the uh, sacrifices and rituals for next time. What we are going to do tonight is holy shit, it's snowing, Tasha. Um, <laughs> no, we're going it's my car in the garage. Yes, your car's in the garage. Only I have to go out into the cold. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so, uh, the plan for tonight is you guys can play and shop and do whatever you want until you go to sleep or apparently make a break for it. Was uh, discussion, but whenever that decision is made is where we're going to end for the night. Well, I've done all of my shopping. Um, at this point, I mean, I'm I'm good to go where, where the party decides. Whether we stay, whether we run. 
I'll do one more round to see if I can learn anything new, and then other than that, I'm pretty much done. So those last two together, uh, the only other thing you learn is there is another outsider in town. He is a prisoner of the Deep Father faith. Let's not, uh, let's not cast dispersions on which faith is more important. Um, he is a prisoner, and he is apparently a Dwergar. He is apparently was, from what you've learned, his craft was crashed. In the, in the, his trading craft was crashed. And he washed up on shore and was captured, and they planned to sacrifice him tomorrow. Um, apparently, he was a member of a navigating trade barge of Deep Dwarves, Dwergar. So. Bupito is a Dwergar himself, isn't he? Bupito is a Deep Gnome, or I mean a, a Darrow, not a Deep oh, Gnome, Dar a Darrow, Sorry. which is similar but different. Um, Darrow and Deep Gnomes are not friends. They hate each other to the, the bitter end. I say. Mm. Almost as much as kobolds hate gnomes. For some reason, I thought we had a, a Dwergar in our party for, for whatever reason. Uh -huh. So, it is... Um, it, it's very hard to explain. Um, the Dwergar were a clan of dwarves that went into the Underdark, were captured. This is a very common thing because, for many reasons, if, the longer more you go into... Um, this isn't a lazy reason they're using this, um, but it, it's very deep in lore. But the Dwergar were a clan of dwarves that went into the Underground and were captured by, and then further experimented upon by the Illithids. Where uh, the, the Kawatoans were as well, but the Dwergar were more hardy, so they didn't come out damaged by it because dwarves are very hardy creatures. The, it, it broke the mind of the Kawatoan species. It's a genetic abnormality. They're insane. The Dwergar came out, as opposed to most dwarves, they learned magic. They can naturally cast powerful spells like invisibility and enlarge and shrink. And they don't have the madness. So as opposed, Darrow, on the other hand, are it's 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 very they're they're almost like a cross between humans and gnomes that were again captured and tortured by the but they are very unusual. They're small, they're evil, and they are the basic result of centuries and centuries of manipulation and crossbreeding and uh, genetic experiments that they are no longer humans or gnomes or dwarves. They're just like a smashed together version of all three with the madness that Kawatoans have. Huh. Except th th they got less madness and a whole lot of fucking evil. And apparently, Fantasy Grounds so, decided as I that. Said, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. As I said, it's as clear as mud. Yeah. Uh -huh. And apparently, Fantasy Grounds said that, okay, you're done playing for the day and boot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll let you. You guys don't have to decide tonight. If you guys want to call for the night, if you guys want to chat, discuss it, let me know. If you plan on, uh, we'll decide next time, or if you want to let me know beforehand. If you guys plan on, you know, going back to Plo Plupine, practice that for the last week, by the way, <laughs> uh, his house for to partake willingly in the ritual, or if you plan to make a break for it, or, you know, find the local tavern. They do have taverns. Get shit face drunk. Do your thing. So uh, we'll end the game here. You guys can take it over and let me know what it is you guys want to do, and we'll go from there, and we'll pick up next game. And you guys managed to, with the exception of a small scuffle there, which you easily dominated, 
have a game and you guys can if you think of anything you want to buy between now and then you can if you change your mind you're more than welcome to and i'll see you guys next week i did throw a post up i want your opinions your honest opinions on the uh voice synth synthesizer i used it's something i'm considering adding to the game my general concerns or questions are whether you enjoyed it and whether it contributed or distracted from your enjoyment if I were to use it more. I don't intend to use it for every creature. It'd mostly be conversational creatures, but take it over. Let me know, and I'll see you guys next week. Sounds good. All right. Very cool. Cool. Take it easy. All right. Take care.